Hey everybody, so I am back with a book discussion of Terry Wood's book, Dutch Part 1. The reason why I'm doing this discussion is because true to the game, the trilogy was a big hit on this channel, as well as currently it is a big hit in the theaters, at, at least part two of the trilogy anyway. And um, Dutch is actually another film that is getting ready to be released, which is based off of the author's Terry Woods, uh, her creation, it is her book, and it is actually getting ready to be a film. And it was supposed to be released on the 24th of this week. Actually, initially, they said the 26th. Looks like the date changed to the 25th from other social media posts. Then it became the 24th. And now, if you go to Instagram, uh, the Dutch Instagram account, you will see that it has been postponed due to the pandemic so you know everyone is just waiting and I thought to myself well this is a good time to do a book discussion because what I noticed is many people are saying they love the trilogy but it was years ago that the book came out so they don't really remember what the book was about they got kind of an idea but they really don't remember and I said to myself, just like with True to the Game, I might as well save some of you some time and go ahead and do a book discussion so that you don't have to reread the book if you don't want to. And instead, you can watch this video as a refresher. And because so many people supported me strongly with my True to the Game book discussions, I felt like not only would this be pretty cool to present to you all who are fans of Terry Woods books, but also it may be of some assistance with promoting the film. One thing I noticed uh, real briefly before I get to the discussion is that um, with the film Dutch, if you look at their social media presence versus true to the game, it's a very big difference in following. Now they were getting ready to release this film Dutch in theaters this week. However, I see with their Instagram account, I don't know, it doesn't even look like they have many followers versus true to the game, which of course has had time because this was part two that was released this year. So it has had time to gain followers and build some sort of following versus Dutch, which, you know, in my opinion, while the producer Manny Haley did an excellent job with promoting all of these films, I don't feel like other maybe you know, like there there still just wasn't enough promo for Dutch specifically to gain some sort of following so that it, in my opinion, can do very well when it hits the theaters. Now, of course, with films, doing well also depends on what was the film's budget, how much was spent versus how much it makes. So if Dutch was more of a lower uh lower budget film then it makes sense that you know maybe they're not pressed about it maybe they just feel like they'll ride the coattails of true to the game with the fans of true to the game and and those same fans would go back out and see dutch but in my opinion them postponing the release date means that it gives them more time to market Dutch um, to more of a broader audience so that they can get more people interested and to in, into the theaters to see the film. Although I know we are currently living under situ circumstances that it seems almost silly to sit here and talk about going to a film or going to a public theater. And that is why many have argued in the comment section on social media too, that these films just need to be released to streaming, but apparently that's not exactly what the filmmakers want to do. Or maybe there's some reason as to why they haven't done it yet or choosing to release it in, in theaters. Listen, I don't know. I'm just here to bring y'all to book discussion, but these are some things I wanted to put out there before uh, discussing this book part one of Dutch so now that we've gotten all of that out the way and now that I've made it clear that no one knows when the film is going to be released as of right now Sunday uh, the 22nd of November let's get into this book discussion okay so I'm gonna do this chapter by chapter I read some of the feedback for true to the game book discussions Okay, I can take constructive criticism. So I'm going to do my best to make sure I stick to the subject, not bounce all around, but I can't promise you that, you know, there's gonna be perfection on this end, all right? I still do me at the end of the day. Hey, you didn't watch my video for me to be like everybody else. So anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna start with chapter one and, and just kind of go chapter by chapter. So with chapter one, we are introduced to the main characters or I would say the spine of this entire story. So we have basically the setting is a courtroom, I assume in Newark, New Jersey, which is where Dutch did most of his uh his crimes and his you know built his organization and that's where he's from apparently um i could be wrong on that but anyway um uh, going off of what i remember anyway so dutch is his real name is bernard 
Bernard James. And yes, I have my notes. I will be doing that quite often. His real name is Bernard James, but he's known in the streets by Dutch. That would be his street name. And so he's in court. He's on trial for all of the crimes that he has committed allegedly. And the man that is trying him is District Attorney Anthony Jacobs, who is actually like the successor of another district attorney who attempted to take Dutch down at one point. And that man name was Fred Lagoda. And Fred Lagoda like spent his entire career trying to nail Dutch. Unfortunately, he was unsuccessful and Anthony Jacobs sworn that he would do it, you know, because Fred Lagoda did not get a chance to. So I think Fred Lagoda, they basically made it seem like he was, uh, Anthony DA, Anthony Jacobs, um, like, I guess mentor and really pass the torch on to him to take down Dutch. So apparently these people are like obsessed with taking down Dutch. Then you have Dutch's legal defense. Um, the main counselor on his side is an attorney by the name of Michael Glass. What I find interesting, and I wrote this down too, is that if you watch the trailer for Dutch, you will see that there is actually a woman who appears to be the attorney of Dutch. And that woman, her character, as I dug and did my research, her character's name is Michelle Nichols. And she's played by the actress Natasha Mark. And Natasha Mark um, actually posted on her Instagram confirming that she is the actress that plays uh, this character, Michelle Nichols. So I assume based off of the way the trailer is made, she is actually going to take the role of Michael Glass in the book so instead of him having instead of Dutch having a male um, attorney he will actually have a female attorney played by the woman that we constantly see in uh, the trailer so if you see the trailer you'll know what I'm talking about so anyway for the sake of this book we're gonna discuss we're gonna talk about Michael Glass but just keep in mind that he, in the film I believe he will be played by a woman so the courtroom scene, we have D.A. Anthony Jacobs giving his opening statement, painting uh, Dutch out to be a murderous statistic. Then we have the opposing counsel, Michael Glass, who says his opening statement in defense of Dutch. And what Dutch also noticed that irritated him in that courtroom is the fact that the jury was actually an all white jury. And I believed it was handpicked by DA Anthony Jacobs. So it almost seems like it was done on purpose or not even almost, but it was pretty much done on purpose to make sure that Dutch is convicted for his crimes. So chapter two, we learn more about the people in Dutch's lies specifically his mother Dolores Murphy and in my opinion I don't know if you could say she really was in his life she actually quite irritated me in this book and I'm getting ready to tell you why so first and foremost we know Dutch is, the character Dutch is going to be pay, played by the actor Lance Gross it's just obvious if you watch the trailer however his mother Dolores Murphy I believe is going to be played by the actress and singer entertainer Macy Gray which is awesome because Macy Gray hello she can act but anyway um um, with that being said, going back to the book in chapter two, we learned that Dolores Murphy is like this, she grew up during the civil rights, uh, when the riots was happening and things like that. She took part in the um, riots. Um, basically, it seemed as though she was a very sheltered little girl. And then something happened where she witnessed uh, some riots occurring and she was, she ended up out on the street when the riots were occurring, right? And she walked past a store that had, that was not touched by the riots because it had a sign in the window that said, um, this is black owned, but she actually knew the store was far from being black owned and it infuriated her. So she went inside the store y'all and she was going to like steal some stuff out of it and eat some stuff, but something just gave her the idea to set the place on fire. And once she made that move, she knew she was no longer going to be that little girl that she used to be. And she also knew she could no longer go back home. So fast forward to later on in her life, she was out and about living, uh, under some other woman who took in other young ladies and you know kind of pimped them out or whatever the case may be and I don't know it wasn't clear if she had ever been one of those other young ladies but what was clear was that she was living on her own and she was like completely different than the little girl that she once was and eventually she wound up meeting who would become Dutch's father Bernard J Bernard James Sr. and Bernard James Sr. was a military man 
And I don't know, I forgot how it happened, but they end up, you got to go back and read the book because I'm not going to give every single detail, but they ended up uh, dancing with one another and became very infatuated with one another. Eventually, they linked up, uh, got together, ended up um, moving in together. But at some point, Bernard James confessed to her that this whole entire time of their whirlwind romance he was actually only on military leave and that he was actually going back to the military, which she was not even aware of. She thought they were getting ready to live together, get married, start a life together. And unfortunately, that was not the case. And what was even darker about the situation was that Bernard James Sr. or yeah, Bernard James Sr. basically confessed to um, Dolores Murphy that he joined the military with the purpose of killing Caucasians because of the fact that while they were fighting the Vietnam War, he had no quarrel with the Vietnamese. He had a quarrel with the people that were in the country that he lived in and was born onto, that land that he lived in, but that treated him like crap, that tortured his people, that enslaved his people, that treated him as less than a man. So when he signed up for that war, he signed up strategically so that he would be free to go out there, get a weapon in his hand and kill those who stood uh, you know, beside him in the war. He was actually just trying to kill the Caucasians. He was not trying to kill the Vietnamese. So he confessed to that to her and said like he had killed numerous uh, soldiers and that the only Vietnamese that he was killing were those who would get in his way of killing someone else or, or just were an imminent threat. But for the most part, he, he was out there killing Caucasians and it was empowering to him and he was not willing to give that up for any romance. He basically was like confessing to her that he's, he's damaged, he's, he's damaged, he's dark, this is what he enjoys. This is what he has to do to feel like a man. Like that's what he felt like he had to do. And, and he basically, it wasn't like he was telling her he was leaving and going back. It was more like he was searching for her permission to do so. And because I believe she witnessed as a young girl, the hatred that Caucasians in this country, you know, had towards um, highly melanated beings and the, the torture and, and how we were treated. I believe because she witnessed that she on some level understood what Bernard James Sr. was saying out his mouth. And she knew she would have to release him because she knew that he would stay if she asked him to, because he did, he was in love with her. Um, and she knew that if she asked him to stay, he would stay, but she knew there would be a part of him that would probably die on the inside because this was something he felt like he had to do in order to feel like a complete man. Although we'll learn later in the book, it really still didn't do him any justice. If anything, it drove him possibly crazy and, you know, but we'll learn about that uh, in some later chapters. Dolores Murphy did end up letting go of Bernard James Sr. And she ended up giving birth to Bernard James Jr. without Bernard James Sr. Uh, being present. So I believe the absence of, you know, the father and then not to mention Dolores Murphy as a crappy mother really contributed to Dutch looking for his confirmation in life um, from the streets. So moving on to chapter three, we learn about Dutch's relationship with a man by the name of Roberto Piazza and his wife, Mrs. Piazza. So at 14 years old, Dutch was Dutch strategically began working for um, this man by the name of Roberto. He would do little things for him in, in his convenience store, uh, like clean up and, and whatever little little stuff. Uh, for the most part, I believe he was doing it for free. But he was very strategic. He knew that Roberto Piazza had connections to the mob or the mafia, whatever they're called. And he wanted to work his way in. He had to gain his trust first. Now, even though he was being strategic about working for the man, um, he didn't have any ill will towards uh, Roberto at all. However, what I did not like is that the characters, Roberto and his wife, Mrs. Piazza, they were very racist. They were very racist and they really didn't think too highly of uh, anybody that's highly melanated, let alone Dutch. Um, and over time throughout the book, you, you know, we'll learn that they changed their mind on that, but it's still, it was just like, ugh, they, they, they're cringy. Like, you know, Dutch was 
interesting to deal with them but again he did it for his own strategic reasons so with that being said there was a day they were all in the store together and someone came in to rob the store and dutch um the guy held up all of them in the store dutch mrs piazza and mr piazza aka also known as roberto um because they called him a lot by his first name so i'm just going to call him roberto um and dutch made it seem like he was going to lead the robber to this safe that he knew roberto kept in the back so the the this made roberto and his wife go huh you traitor like we knew we couldn't trust you because you're black <laughs> you know that's that's pretty much how the book made it seem like that was their reaction so the robber leads them to the back room with the intentions of getting a safe that dutch uh pretty much promises and so dutch is like good looking out i don't know why you i mean the uh not dutch but the robber's like good looking out i don't know why you're doing it but good looking out and at this point roberto and mrs piazza are like upset they're thinking oh they're confirmation they're, this is confirmation to how they doubt Dutch in the first place and didn't really trust him but they thought he was just a nice young man he'd never asked him for anything and you know or nice little boy he never asked him for anything he worked for free so they they were pretty much confused but angry at this point well sure enough Dutch while there was a safe in the back Dutch wound up setting the robber up so he got him back there and got him distracted so that he was able to pull out his own gun and kill the robber and when he did that it it, w it really shocked Roberto and Mrs. Piazza, not because they had not seen people killed before, but because they could not believe that a 14 year old boy could be that vicious, could be that strategic. So it really, really shook them. But what it also did was it solidified that they could trust uh, Dutch with their lives. They could trust Dutch and invite him further into their lives because here he was sacrificing, possibly risking his own life um, with the robber, but also he saved their lives lives in the process and he he killed someone for them so this was a very big deal but again dutch even at 14 years old was very strategic and knew what he was doing so while he didn't even have to set up the robber to go there and do that you know he used that opportunity to get himself um into the street life which i guess was was a goal of his for quite some time because apparently he was prior to that already doing little little petty car thieving and stuff like that and we'll get into that more but anyway when he did that um roberto took him to meet a man that he was connected to and these are italians by the way so he took him to meet a man that he was connected to that really uh, was running the streets i guess at the time in newark new jersey and the man name was fat tony and fat tony was like hesitant at first but then he was like really this this little boy did all of that okay well you know well okay so what dutch worked out with him out of you know fat tony's respect for him and what he had done was uh dutch worked out a chop shop for him and his homeboys so that basically when they do their little petty thieveries or thieving or whatever um they could take some of the car parts that they steal or the cars that they steal to the chop shop so they would always have a guaranteed place to take the cars that they would steal they would have a guaranteed place to take them to and make money off of so now we're in chapter four now it's worth noting that up until this point what is happening is the book is basically giving us flashbacks so the actual present day setting is uh dutch in the courthouse um on his trial but during the trial as people come to testify or as uh dutch has these moments where he just basically goes and thinks about the past we have flashbacks throughout the book of uh the things that have occurred in his life and what has led him to where he is right now so with that being said mrs piazza she actually does visit um dutch in the courthouse and he kind of has a few words that he exchanges with her but she pretty much leaves the courthouse feeling like she'll know she knows she'll never see him again and um the way we hear about her in in the introduction of her and uh, Roberto in the book is like she she desp despises Dutch but of course he saves their lives so she actually grows attached to him and we'll learn more about that uh, throughout the book another thing worth noting is that Dutch has a very loyal friend by the name of Craze and chapter four introduces this friend Craze now I personally feel like the actor Jeremy Meeks who can also be found in true to the game part two I feel like Jeremy Meeks aka prison bay is going to be 
see the actor that plays the character Craze based off of the way the trailer looks and based off of some hints that was dropped on Instagram. But anyway, um, so with that being said, chapter four introduces us to Duchess, pretty much Duchess' best friend his loyal friend craze aka christopher shaw that is his government name christopher shaw but they call him craze and rightfully so because basically people knew that dutch was very hardcore in the streets and was willing to do whatever it took to get him wherever he wanted to be in life and craze stuck by his side through all that and had to be equally crazy in order to ride with dutch so therefore he ended up getting the reputation for crazy and they, they just shortened it to crazy or something like that but anyway uh craze was raised by his aunt his mother passed when he was eight years old um and he, i guess he too turned to the street life so he was a part of that petty thievery as well um and what had happened was when dutch killed that robber in the store he had to, he was actually responsible for getting rid of the body because mr uh mr piazza roberto and mrs piazza were so in shock they were just they they just didn't do anything and and that's when dutch volunteered to get rid of the body so that leads on to chapter four where dutch goes to craze and tells craze like listen if you down for me, <laughs> let me know right now, because what I'm getting ready to show you, we cannot go back on. Like there is no going back. Once you see this, that's it. We're going to go forward and we're going to do this together. And Craig's is like, what is he talking about? And sure enough, Dutch shows him the bullet riddled body. Uh, which is the robber from the store that Dutch killed. And mind you, they're both like just 14 at, at this present time. So he shows him the body and Craze ends up, you know, losing his lunch basically because it was like his first actual dead body. But it dang sure wasn't about to be uh, first dead body he saw, but it dang sure was not about to be his last that he has seen. And basically Dutch explained to him what he did, why he did it at first. Craze was like, dude, why are you doing anything for Roberto or the Piazzas knowing fully well those Italians don't like black people? But Dutch explained his position and how he used what he did in order to get in with Roberto so that Roberto could introduce him to his connections, aka Fat Tony in the Italian Mafia, so that Dutch can begin to work his way in the street organization and begin to make a name for himself. So after explaining all of this, it clicked with Craze and you can just tell right off the back that Dutch is more of the strategic analytical thinker of it all uh, craze is more of the muscle so automatically that you can see the roles being established but anyway he he basically has craze you know decide if he's down or not and craze is like sure okay let's do this so they end up getting rid of the body and eventually Dutch disappears like he just doesn't for days he's gone and craze is like did this dude did you know like where is he at is he hurt i don't i can't remember if the books made it seem like craze felt like dutch betrayed him um it, it didn't seem like that it seemed like more so craze was worried that dutch was hurt that someone came and retaliated against dutch and this at this point when dutch disappeared after they got rid of the body Craze tried to reach out to Dolores Murphy, Dutch's mother, and his mother just basically blew it off like, well, he all right, he can take care of himself. Like, that's what I said when I said I was irritated in this book about the mother, Dolores Murphy, Murphy because she was just terrible. She was just an awful person, uh, an awful mother. But um, Craze, you know, Craze was more worried about her son than she was, so it was irritating. But anyway, eventually Dutch showed up as Craze explained that uh, the robber that they killed was actually a drug fiend um, who was also a brother of a female that Craze used to mess with. But Dutch, he came back and let Craze know that he had obtained that chop shop. And, and Craze was like, well, you just got rid of a body for these mafia males and the the only thing they gave you in exchange was a chop shop and that's when dutch had to break it down to him like dude this is where we start this isn't where we're we're going to end up this is just the start for us we have to start somewhere so they began doing big things as far as stealing vehicles go and they started to assemble a crew so at this point they had assembled this crew 
consisting of some other characters that are worth noting. Uh, a character by the name of Rock, One-Eyed Rock, because he had literally one eye, which apparently we learn later on in the epilogue of the book that he lost his other eye messing with fireworks with him and his family. Um, then there is a character by the name of Angel. She's the, about the only female in the group. Um, there's a character by the name of Zoom, and he has a crew called the Zoo Crew. And I believe that's it next. Oh, and a, a man by the name of Quan, because he's an important character too. And then you, of course, you have Dutch and you have Craze. So this is their group. And this is pretty much what the, the characters we are going to learn more about intimately throughout the rest of the books. And they are, they are basically running this street organization together, beginning as petty car thieves. And then eventually they move up to luxury cars because now they got a chop shop that they can take them back to. So now they're moving up to luxury cars since they get paid more for them. So because of that reason, Dutch comes up with this brilliant idea and this uh, brilliant st strategy to go and rob some sort of port that would have a bunch of BMWs, um, like brand new BMWs, and this was called Port New York. And unfortunately, the job just got really, really messy. Okay, fast. so Dutch ends up coming up with this plan to rob Port Newark. And he was very strategic by saying that they were only going to grab BMWs and grab 14 of them. So the plan was to have Angel, who is the only female of the group, distract the security officers of the port by, I guess, getting into some fight with Craze, making it seem like it was a domestic dispute, therefore alerting the security guards and, and forcing them to respond to that dispute. So while the security guards would be distracted uh, with Angel, Angel and her beauty and mind you Angel is actually a lesbian um, female but they she was a very attractive woman according to the book so or att attractive young girl because she's technically not a woman I listen that's the book but anyway um, her and Craze got into some fake argument and the police they wind up coming over or the security guards they wind up coming over and while they were distracted with that altercation it allowed dutch um and his crew to basically go get the vehicles that they were planning on stealing which were all bmws well long story short somehow some way the security guards caught wind of the fact that they were trying to steal the vehicle so the altercation slightly worked but then it didn't completely work it did not hold their attention long enough so um they wound up I guess calling for backup or whatever the case may be because suddenly uh, Zoom, I believe it was Quan and Dutch that ended up getting apprehended. Everyone else seemed to have gotten away, but Dutch and Quan ended up getting apprehended and um, had to serve time for the attempted robbery of the vehicles at Port Newark. Okay, so at this point, we have chapter five. And then chapter five is actually ironically called uh, the lockup. So at this point, we still are in the present day of Dutch being on trial. And, and the DA, Anthony Jacobs, who wants to see Dutch basically hang for his crimes, he calls his witness up to the stand, which is a man by the name of Shorty, also known as Kenneth Jackson. Kenneth Jackson, a.k.a. Shorty, is someone that spent time in prison with Dutch, um, I think he they both did it. He did an 18 month stint or something like that. But he spent time with Dutch in prison many years ago, and I believe the correlation was he spent time with Dutch in prison when Dutch was busted for that Port Newark uh, attempted vehicle robbery uh, whole scenario, or whatever. But anyway, um, so this man by the name of Shorty, Dutch always knew that he was not to be trusted. But the reason why him and Dutch became kind of cool in prison is because. Dutch Dutch knew that he knew other people like he had connections with correctional officers. He had connections with the gang members in the prison. He also had connection with the drug dealers in the prison. So uh, Shorty knew a lot of information and Shorty had a lot of connections and Dutch pretty much used him in prison for those connections. But Shorty did not make it easy on Dutch initially when Dutch got in prison. He pretty much tested Dutch out by uh, throwing Dutch to the woods, so to speak. 
he pumped up Dutch's image in prison in front of like a whole bunch of other prisoners who wanted to challenge that because he basically was like, oh, here goes Dutch. He's big. He's bad out on the street. So all the other prisoners were like, mm, really? We'll see. And um, that got Dutch into a fight immediately once he began his stint in prison. Now, mind you, him and Quan was in prison, but I think they ended up in separate prisons at that point. I don't think they were in the same prison. I think they ended up at first in the same one and then somehow they got separated or something like that because that's how it seemed like the book made it uh made it seem so anyway um but anyway dutch uh held his own he these guys they tried to come for him and fight him one of the guys he was able to take down the other one it was kind of it was pretty much a draw and even though dutch didn't necessarily win he didn't necessarily lose either so he got a lot of people's respect for that and it seemed as though the rest of his stint in prison was a lot smoother than if he would have lost that fight and lost and it did not gain the respect of other prisoners so with that being said dutch became really cool with a lot of people he was never in a gang but he just became cool with a lot of people and had a lot of people respect and because of that he was able to network and learn about things that were happening in the street so meanwhile in the current day you have shorty who served this sentence with dutch or served some time with dutch try to tell the jurors in the courtroom how dutch was in the gang and dutch was big and bad and things like that and he didn't even say it in a way where he meant it like in a in a in a way where he was trying to throw dutch under the bus he meant it in a way as if he thought he was paying homage to dutch and dutch was just sitting back like this dumb fool but it was it was funny how the book described how dutch emotions were listening to shorty on the witness stand sound like he's trying to pay homage to dutch but in reality he's hurting dutch's uh chances of going free basically so it that was quite interesting but anyway the chapter um continues to go back in the day so it it goes back to when dutch learned while he was in prison um angel would actually write to him but it seemed i think she would write to him i don't think she would visit but i think she would write to him but um no one else seemed to be able to no one else wrote to him his mother didn't write to him um the, his best friend craze because his best friend craze was kind of illiterate he wasn't able to write to him, but one time Angel forced him to write to him. And when he did, Dutch was like, yeah, I see why he hasn't wrote me because he's illiterate. And like he, his writing was kind of like of a child. So that is the reason why he didn't really write Dutch. But Angel did write Dutch. And when she would write him, she would let him know like what was going on on the streets too. So that's when Dutch learned about this Nigerian who basically took over Dutch's place in the streets um, as and, and moved his way to the top very quickly. And the Nigerian name was Kazami. And Kazami was someone that was now running things in Newark, New Jersey. However, front member Fat Tony, who Dutch got in cool with when he when he killed that robber back at Roberto's and he got that chop shot through uh, Fat Tony. Fat Tony now has someone else he was working with, uh, another Italian by the name of Frankie Serbono, Sabono, uh, aka Frankie Bono. I'm just going to call him Frankie Bono because I can say that. <laughs> so Frankie Bono, he was working with this guy now. Fat Tony did not particularly like fr particularly like Frank Frankie Bono because he knew Frankie Bono really wanted his place. But I guess in order to try to get Kazami off the streets, off what they consider to be their t territory, the Italians, he was willing to work with Frankie Bono. And Frankie Bono attempted to kill um, or assassinate. Uh, same thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was a, he attempted to assassinate. Kazami two times but he failed both times so this will soon become a big thing by the time uh Dutch was going to be released from prison it's also worth noting that during the time that Dutch was in prison one of his close friends who was also a part of his crew that I failed to mention was a man by the name or a young boy because they're all really young at this point um his name was Shock and Shock unfortunately was killed in a motorcycle accident and then um Rock was actually beginning to work for Kazami during the time that Dutch was in prison uh Zoom and the Zoo crew they were still out sticking up things as well according to the book that is the exact term sticking up things um craze began working for someone which we're going to learn in the next chapter angel she was also i believe working for kazami as well um and then there was kwan who had been in jail but i think at some point he had been released and but he but during the time that he whenever it was during the time dutch was in jail kwan um actually did write dutch and we'll learn more about kwan as well as we go along but at this point, when Dutch is released from prison, Dutch is actually 16 years of age. 
So chapter six is titled The Return. So this is when Dutch is released from prison and Craze comes and picks him up and Craze being Craze, living up to his name, um, picks Dutch up in a stolen vehicle. And even Dutch was like, really dude, a stolen vehicle? Are you trying to get me sent back to prison? But that is Craze for you. So basically, I would like to highlight that in this chapter, I learned a little term called Pebbles Beach. And apparently, I don't know if you all have heard of this, but Pebbles Beach is slang for any rooftop on a project building. Anyway, um, so when Dutch is released and Craze picks him up in this stolen car, Dutch lets Craze know that he wants to see his mother. And so Craze takes Dutch to his mother. Now, mind you, when Dutch was in prison, he attempted to write his mother. Um, and, and I say prison, but, you know, Dutch was actually quite young. So he's like 16 now and out. So I, I don't know if it's called a correctional facility. I, I don't know. But, you know, he let's keep in mind, he's only 16 at this point um, when he was finally released from uh, whatever lockup that was that he was in. Also, too, uh, keep in mind that he looks different. I, I suppose, according to the book, he is swole from working out and stuff. So, so he looks different and looks healthy and looks pretty built to those um, who knew him before he went in. So anyway, but during this time, Dutch was always wondering why didn't his mom write to him? And when he tried to write her, she never responded back. Not to mention she ended up, I guess, moving because his mail ended up being returned back to sender so he somehow managed to get a hold of her new address and he showed up to her place and instead of giving him like a warm welcome she was just completely callous she told him that she was disappointed in the fact that he allowed himself to get locked up I guess by uh quote unquote you know the man because of the fact that you know it seemed as though Dolores Murphy uh Dutch's mother was still wrapped up in the mindset of the times that she grew up in as a little girl not to say much change not to say much had changed since then but it was more so uh she was still stuck in that time of his father leaving her so i think it was a very traumatic experience between what she endured as a highly melanated little girl during that time and the riots and things like that and on top of it you know the love of her life leaving to go kill the individuals who they viewed as their oppressors as as the reason why they even had to go through things like that i mean they were the reasons why they went through things like that so with all of that it seemed as though her mindset she was just as traumatized as uh Bernard James Sr and with that life to her she viewed life as a constant war and so when Dutch was arrested she was disappointed because she's like why did you let them catch you it's kind of like war you you don't let them catch you you either die or you escape but you never let them catch you so that's pretty much what she was conveying to him in this chapter when he went to visit her house and she's like going off on him telling her you better not let them catch you again otherwise I'll kill you myself and he's just like confused because it's not exactly what he expected but at the same time he's not too shocked because I guess he knows his mother and her character so you know before he walks out the door she just turns around and says to him Bernard and he looks up at her like and she's like I just wanted to say your name and to me it's twisted but to me I feel like that was kind of her way of letting him know that she loves him without her actually saying she loves him so after Dutch has his encounter with his mother, Craze and Dutch gets back in the car and Craze takes him to see Angel. Now remember Angel is one of the, well actually the only female uh, member of their clique and she is very loyal to Dutch. Um, again, she is very attractive according to the book, but she's also a lesbian and Dutch has been physically attracted to her, but he is aware that, you know, she's a lesbian. So he doesn't try to shoot a shot or anything with her, but she's crazy about Dutch. So anyway, um, what happens is she tells Dutch like, Hey, I have a surprise for you. She's all excited to see him. And Craze is like, um, he takes her, he, Craze is still driving the car and he takes Angel and Dutch to wherever Angel wants to go to show Dutch the surprise. And the surprise is a stolen BMW that is like, I guess, decked out or whatever the case may be. And a, a fake driver's license for Dutch. Now, mind you, again, Dutch is only 16. So it was a big deal to Dutch because this was a big gift. This was 
pretty cool that you know these they're like his family this is his clique they're his family and before he got locked up they were down for him and now that he's out they're showing that they are still down for him not only that but angel also got him a female uh for the night because clearly he's done his time in prison and he just feels like he got to have a a female even though he's only 16 dang on years old but anyway there's the mother of me coming out so <laughs> i'm gonna get back on track with the book but after a Dutch has his encounter with the female that Angel presented him with for the evening. Dutch is so distracted with thinking about taking over the streets that he's not even paying the female any attention anymore, even though he's already had his way with her. He's up there contemplating like how he's going to take over the streets. So for him, he's weighing the option of if he's going to go after Frankie's, uh, Frankie Bono, who is working under Fat Tony, or is he going to go after the Nigerian Kazami who is truly running the streets? And at this point, Dutch is aware that Frankie Bono has made two attempts to get rid of Kazami for Fat Tony and failed to do so. So immediately, Dutch is like, okay, he's good. So Frankie Sabano is my enemy too, but he's too cool with uh, Fat Tony. And that, mind you, is who Dutch wants to stay in good grace with. So he can't exactly go after Frankie Bono without making enemies with Fat Tony because that is Fat Tony's runner man. But he can go after Kazami, eliminate Kazami, take over Kazami's role and show Fat Tony that Frankie Bono isn't worth a darn and that he can do what he wanted Frankie Bono to do instead. So that will get Dutch in uh, Fat Tony's good grace. And again create a place for uh dutch in the streets not only get place but secure him in like the top ranking on the streets and guarantee he has the streets of newark and on top of it guarantee he has the protection of fat tony so dutch sets it begins to set in place how he's going to go about eliminating the nigerian kazami from the entire game and getting back in good with fat tony so now we are at chapter seven. We are halfway through the book and we're back at the courtroom, um, in the courtroom on the trial and now called to the witness stand by DA Anthony Jacobs. Again, he's the DA that wants to see Dutch hang for his crimes. He calls on a witness who is all too familiar to Dutch. It is actually one of his former, um, partners Quan mind you Quan is the one that he was locked up with initially because of that failed attempt to steal those BMWs at the port in Newark um and Quan on Quan at this point has become Reverend Equan Taylor he's going by his government name and so what we learn from this chapter is that um, Quan originally left Newark to go to California to start his life anew. So he had originally left the game completely. He was not cut out for it. Craze had been warning Dutch that he felt like Quan was not cut out for the kind of life that they were living. And Dutch kind of deep down knew it, but he seemed to have been really cool with Quan. And like I said, he was locked up with them. And then eventually, I guess at some point they were split up um, with the facilities that facilities that they were in. So Quan was one of the very few of the crew that actually did write to Dutch. Although the book never says what exactly he was writing to Dutch, but it kind of goes to show they had some sort of cool relationship. And I think Dutch really empathized with Quan. So anyway, when uh, Quan took the witness stand, he was he was kind of nervous with Dutch and he kind of said to Dutch, like, you know, I've been having these, like before he even got up on this witness stand, I don't even know when he found time to do this, but I guess at some point when he was passing Dutch by, he kind of stopped and told Dutch, like, I'd be having nightmares about the things that we've done, feeling like my time is coming, don't you? And Dutch is like, no. <laughs> so it goes to show, you know, that, Quan is very remorseful for what he has done. Meanwhile, Dutch is like, it's all, it's whatever, you know, I'm, it is what it is. And you knew what it was when you signed up. So anyway, the book lets us know that at some point after whatever it was that Quan was involved in, which we're going to get into, uh, with Dutch and the crew, he had informed Dutch that he was going to lead to California. Like he can't do this. He's going to leave. He can't continue doing this. And he expected Dutch to react in a way that was basically going to terrify him. 
but Dutch actually gave him five thousand dollars in cash and was like it is what it is because again he knew that Quan was not cut out for what they were doing but what Dutch couldn't figure out is why did Quan come back to testify you know he gave him the money he gave him his good graces to leave but why would Quan come back to testify against him and I believe the way the book made it seem was that Quan just felt like he had done so much dirt and he had participated in the death of so many people um, at the hands of Dutch that he was basically washing himself clean by coming forth and testifying not to mention that da jacobs uh da anthony jacobs offered uh reverend reverend kwan at this point now uh immunity so he was able to come back and testify against dutch and the crew but he was granted immunity so it definitely seemed like a it seemed like betrayal on a grand scale however again the way dutch reacted to it, it he didn't react in a way where it seemed like he was he wanted to get revenge on Quan. It just seemed like he just was pretty much telling himself like, well, you knew Quan wasn't cut out for this. What do you expect? When Quan or Reverend Equan Taylor took the stand, he began to dis he began to let the jurors know in the courtroom know about the murder that occurred in April of 1987, which was actually how Dutch ended up murdering Kazami, the Nigerian that was that had taken control over the streets while Dutch was in prison. So this is the story. This is what happened. Dutch basically got the whole crew over to uh, Craze's aunt house. Cause mind you again, Craze's mother passed when he was eight. He was now living with his, he was living with his aunt. At this point, they're like 16 and 17 or whatever at this point. So C Dutch had them all show up at, um, at Craze's house. And when I say all, this is Craze, Dutch, Quan, uh, Zoom, the Zoo crew, Rock, and Angel. So that was all the crew, the original crew from back before the whole Port Newark situation happened and Dutch was arrested. So this is the same original crew. But mind you, some of them at this point are now working for uh, Kazami because of course he's running things now in the streets. But in the meanwhile, Craze isn't exactly working for Kazami. He's working for this man by the name of Sugar Ray who we will learn about um, soon enough. So... Dutch is giving this huge speech as to what he plans on doing, why he plans on eliminating Kazami. And the crowd or the, the group of his is like, really? You really think that you can defeat Kazami? Are you out of your mind? Because they've heard so much stuff about this man, so much ruthless stuff about him that they just don't see it happening. But they just don't know Dutch completely. So the way Dutch convinces them to join him in taking down Kazami is he basically lets them know like listen you all are doing small time stuff but if we move or if we eliminate Kazami then we can all be doing big time things making big time money but at the moment you're just a small fish in a big pond and Kazami is taking like the most he's he's living this kingdom lifestyle while you're scrapping for crumbs scraping for crumbs so he did a good job with convincing them and mind you they're young anyway he did a good job with convincing them that you know to join his ranks and to join him in this plot against kazami so eventually after some hesitation they decide that you know dutch is right and that they were going to join him on this quest to take down kazami but they needed to know first how they were going to do this like what was dutch's plan so dutch's plan was simple they he said you know he was going to figure out what female was closest to kazami and use her to get to kazami so because this is only part one in the first half of the book Dutch, I am going to stop this video right here and I am going to release the second half of the book um, chapter by chapter. So from like chapter eight to chapter 14 and it's like an epilogue and a co final conclusion or something like that. I'm going to make that the second video. So I'm going to go ahead and put this video by itself and make the uh, other half of the book on a second video. If you are interested in checking out reading these book books, uh, Dutch trilogy books, um, or listening to the audible like I did, I'm going to leave the link to in the description box to those options so that you can check out the book on your own. But stay tuned for part two of my book discussion for the book Dutch written by Terry Woods.